Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Janelle Novel. This edition Stop Stories. Vaccination hesitancy remains a concern for the government of St. Lucia. Government entities benefit from a donation of 100,000 face masks. And St. Lucia celebrates the value and virtue of public service to the community. St. Lucia remains heavily armed in the fight against COVID-19, having recently bolstered its national vaccination campaign. While the Ministry of Health and Wellness has noted some progress in the uptake of the vaccine, the chairman of the command center and government minister explains that vaccination hesitancy remains a concern. We get details in this report. The Ministry of Health and Wellness continues a robust national vaccination campaign, encouraging members of the public to get vaccinated as St. Lucia strives to return to normalcy. Vaccination against the coronavirus, according to health officials, aids not only in fighting the virus but reducing the risk of developing the severe form of the illness, hospitalization and even death. Minister for Tourism, Information and Broadcasting, Culture and Creative Industries Honorable Dominic Fede indicated that while significant progress is being made in obtaining herd immunity, vaccination hesitancy remains a concern. The vaccine, the whole business of vaccine hesitancy remains a, a major concern for our government and we are going to do anything possible to encourage St. Lucians to get vaccinated because what we have seen in countries where people have vaccinated in large numbers, it has had a significant uh, positive impact on the number of um, or the rate of hospitalization, the rate of deaths and the rate of infection of COVID-19. And the science is showing that the vaccine has been a game changer and it has been one of the greatest weapons that we can use to fight against COVID-19. And so what we have to do is really um, use our respective offices and certainly I want to encourage you the media to use your um, platforms to encourage people to go get vaccinated um, and to really take the jab. It, it really is one of the biggest ways in which we can fight this and reclaim our lives and return to normalcy. The minister, looking globally at vaccination efforts, noted that world leaders at the recently held G7 summit in the UK had expressed concern about the inequality taking place as it relates to access to vaccines. He went on to explain that there is a lot of concern surrounding the accessibility of vaccines by poorer countries and the slow pace at which citizens in developing and poorer countries are being vaccinated. Citing the pledge made by more developed countries to aid where possible, Honorable Fadi asserted that the fight against COVID-19 is a global one. There have been some pledges that they have made um, to help the developed world and the uh, poorer countries to get up and, and step up the rate of vaccination because the way that we can fight COVID is with a global approach. And so I welcome that. And what we really want to do is to make sure that when um, we continue to receive greater numbers of, of doses, that our people will be ready to take them. And what we have to do is use a, a, a multi-pronged approach to ensure that we encourage more people to go and, and take the jab. Obviously, the anti-vaxxers and their campaign uh, really doesn't help the whole situation. So what we have to do is allow the science to inform what is happening. And we see what's happening in the United States. Um, we see what's happening in the UK, uh, two of the forerunners in um, vaccinations. And, and in both instances, those countries are seeing a significant decline in the rate of hospitalization, the rate of infection, and the rate of deaths have come down significantly. So really everything there in the science suggests that we should go take the vaccine. Members of the public are encouraged to get vaccinated to protect not only themselves, but their loved ones as well. From the Government Information Service, I am Janelle Norville. The Ministry of Health and Wellness and other government agencies have benefited from the arrival of 100,000 face masks. More in this report from Jacques Hinkson Compton. The donation of 100,000 face masks was made by local company Triple L Limited. Chief Executive Officer of Triple L, Collins Lynch, 
related the strategy employed in obtaining such a large volume of the protective gear. It took us a little while because of the demands in the world um, for masks. Every time, we only could have ordered 10,000 at a time. And it takes us a little longer than we anticipated because we looked at doing this thing from early April. But because of how we were getting the masks, we had to order 10,000, let it stay in Miami for a little while, then reorder because they, they made it abundantly clear they're not selling more than 10,000 at any given one time to a company. So we did it over, over time. Then um, West Indies Shipping collected all the packages and then brought it here, we cleared it. Lynch also expressed his gratitude to the Ministry of Health and Wellness for providing a waiver on customs duties for the masks and to West Indies Shipping for providing a discounted rate for transporting them. Permanent Secretary Benson Emil explained why this donation was such a timely one. We're required not just to service our medical facilities, but to service essential health institutions like the police, um, other ministries and agencies of government with the essential protective equipment in our response to COVID. So your contribution will come you know, a very long way in that response. It would assist us you know, tremendously in keeping our people pr protected you know, as they look to render service you know, to the general public. In addition to the 100,000 masks provided to the Ministry of Health, Triple L will also make donations to schools in Denry and the Mabuya Valley, as well as the fire and police stations in those communities. From the Ministry of Health and Wellness, I'm Jacques Hinson Compton reporting. St. Lucia's Public Service joins the global community in celebrating the United Nations Public Service Day. The day observed annually on the 23rd of June is geared towards recognizing the value and virtue of public service to the community. This year's observance is being held under the local theme, the work landscape post-pandemic. Hamadi Mark tells us more. Once the 23rd June 2021 saw the annual observance of the United Nations Public Service Day. The observance is being held globally under the theme Innovating the Future Public Service, New Government Models for a New Era to Reach the SDGs. UN Public Service Day brings into focus the value of public service to the community and highlights the role it plays in the development of a nation. The work landscape post-pandemic is the local theme of this year's observance. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the program of activities to commemorate the occasion was significantly condensed to three main events. An ecumenical service was held Wednesday, June 23rd at the Minor Basilica of the Immaculate Conception. The service provided an opportunity for reflection on this year's theme. Prime Minister and Minister for Finance, Economic Growth, Job Creation, External Affairs and the Public Service, Honorable Alan Chastney, said the theme was carefully selected given the tremendous effort and sacrifice made by public servants towards the fight against COVID-19. We must face the reality that the aftermath of the pandemic will require that we do things differently. Having observed your contribution and sacrifices over the last year, I have no doubt that you will take on this challenge. The work landscape post-pandemic will change the way we transact businesses. Since the pandemic, we've been We've seen changes to the business model, not only within government, but with businesses big and small. Due to the transformative developments that are taking place in the world today, and the accelerated adaptation and integration to the use of digital technology, St. Lucia has sped up the redesign of the way government services are delivered to our people. The Prime Minister applauded the public servants for their continued dedication. He indicated post-pandemic, special focus will be given to the island's human resource. We must be mindful of the health of staff, mental, physical and emotional, as this would determine their coping abilities and therefore their ability to, successful contribute, to successfully contribute to the national development. We also must build and, and nurture trust. The level of trust built between employer and employee, supervisors and direct reports and public servants and the citizens will de be dependent on our ability to communicate honestly, fearlessly 
and respectfully. Father Albert Smith encouraged public servants to work together to build a more productive work environment. There are people who do very well in the public service, but for a fact, all of us know it, and I know I'll get my licks for that, but that's okay. Many public servants do not do what they're supposed to do, and they get paid at the end of the month. That is robbery. That is robbing the economy of your country. It's a, it's a fact. Just as you have rights, all of you have a responsibility to give a fair day's work for a fair day's pay. A departmental staff appreciation and recognition day will be observed during the course of Public Service Week. The observance will conclude with a panel discussion slated for Friday, June 25th, at the studios of the GIS. From the Government Information Service, I'm Huma Dimak, reporting. The spotlight is being shown on outstanding youth from the community of Roseau through the Youth Workers Program of the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports. A Facebook page titled Roseau Valley Youth was created to provide exposure that would not be accessible under normal circumstances. Since then, scores of Roseau Valley youth have been highlighted for their various abilities and achievements. Youth worker for the area, Cesaria Hutchinson Passad, says she was inspired to create this platform for her community from youth work programs in other districts. Normally, every year for the month of April, because it's youth month, we highlight young persons in the community. And I realized that Rosa Valley don't get much features from young, by young, young persons being featured. You know, you'd hear more of what you would hear happening in the Rosa Valley would be crime and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So I said, you know what, let me show that this area has more than what people are hearing about. On the news. You know, on the news. Let me show them that we have talent and we have very creative and ed intelligent young persons there who need to be out there, who need to be portrayed, you know. So I went on and I started by using those who have been volunteering for a while now, those who just started and those who've been there for a while, a couple of years in there. And then I said, let me go a little further. Let me start, let me do the entrepreneurs. You know, and I contacted a few persons and I said, would you like to be featured? Because I know that you do this. And they said, yeah, no problem. And some others actually contacted the page wanting to be featured. Mm, nice. And I told them to send me the information, which they did. And then I went ahead. I you know, did some editing and I post. It's, it's selling itself now. Oh, yes, it is. <laughs> it just took it. It has it just took off. One of the Rose of Valley youth attracting the most clicks and favorable comments from the page following is Jeffrey Amap. He is a ceramic artist, among other titles, crafting beauteous works of art using tiles. Amab says he is encouraged by the positive feedback. I do arts and crafts, that's me, you know. I do a little work like um, brick work sometimes, you know, but mm -hmm. my work is at work, art and craft. Okay. So I, I post a few photos of my work I did on Facebook, which it, it attracted her, you know. Mm -hmm. So she told me send my information and my stuff, like she said earlier. Mm -hmm. So I send it in, and you know, she put it out there. So I start getting comments, you know, right. some shares and likes and stuff. Yeah. Well, it make me feel feel great, you know. People could see my work, could see what I could actually do, mm -hmm. instead of thinking about the negative vibe about, you know, she said about the area. People think like, you know, we we're doing bad stuff and mm -hmm. stuff, you know. So I just like it that people could see my work you know mm -hmm. and actually not many youths like could do the work i doing in st lucia you know mm -hmm. you nice. could say like i'm the only one who could do that work youth worker mrs hutchinson passard encourages st lucians at home and abroad to support the page and the industry of the featured youth i can easily be contacted you know they have my those who don't have my number i can be contacted at 713 6424 713 6424 or 717-2126 okay, nice. those are my numbers so they need anything or they want to be featured on the page they can contact me from my personal number or my work number mm -hmm. or they could just message the page directly cesaria hutchinson passad youth worker for the rose of valley community the Caribbean Disaster Emergency Management Agency puts the Regional Response Mechanism on standby to assist Guyana in flood relief and recovery. We hear more from CARICOM News Times to Sanking English Francis. The Caribbean Disaster Emergency Management Agency has placed the Regional Response Mechanism on standby to support Guyana even as the country continues to be impacted by heavy rainfall and flooding. On June 11, Director General of Guyana's Civil Defense Commission, 
Lieutenant Colonel Kester Craig, updated Sidema and the United Nations Resident Coordinator's offices in the Caribbean on the situation, which has been declared as a level two national disaster by President of Guyana, His Excellency Irfan Ali. A level two disaster means that the event is within the country's capacity to respond, but external assistance is also needed. As the government responds to alleviate the impact of the disaster, the National Assembly approved 10 billion Guyana dollars to support relief and recovery efforts. CARICOM member states are extending assistance to Guyana. Chair of CARICOM, Prime Minister Keith Rowley of Trinidad and Tobago has already commissioned the Ministries of Trade and National Security to coordinate its relief assistance. The flooding situation in Guyana is coinciding with exercise trade winds that was launched in Georgetown on the 14th of June. Chief of Staff of Guyana's Defense Force, Brigadier Godfrey Bess, was hopeful that during the U.S.-sponsored multinational exercise, local troops would receive training in best practices in handling national disasters. Five CARICOM countries, the Bahamas, Bermuda, Haiti, Jamaica, and Trinidad and Tobago, are participating in the military training exercise. That report from CARICOM News Times to Sanking English Francis. This is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. With all that's happening around us, simple adjustments are necessary to keep us all safe. When calling 911, we may need a little more information to deploy the right personnel and protocols. You may be asked about your travel history, signs and symptoms, contact and movement history, and whether others in your household are exhibiting similar symptoms. Please, be patient and cooperative during this time to ensure you receive the best possible care while keeping our first responders safe. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle au Creole. Monsieur Ta, Janelle, Monsieur Madame Department qui nous responsabilité pour information en gouvernement cette ci ça c'est GIS, c'est une télévision nationale via NTN. Rapporte ton nouvelle en Creole. Pour ça toi, Primus Hutchinson. Ministère de Santé, j'ai présenté Clarification concernant le rapport de la mort qui est sorti bon et mardi, le 20 mois de juin 2021. Division épidémiologie à ministère de la Santé, toujours à réviser les informations concernant la situation de la maladie corona à cette fois-ci. L'exercice a été fait entre lundi et mardi et le rapport concernant le cycle de C'était à sous huit classifications. En résultat, l'exercice a été fait tout le cycle de la mort entre mois de février et mois de mai l'année 2021. Alors, en résultat, le ministère a présenté un rapport à ce chaque célèbre mois là et c'est date là que c'est le mois là été fait. La mort le mot 80, c'est une femme, Horde Denry, 60 l'année de l'âge, qui a été passé le 4e avril 2021. La mort le mot 80, 81, c'est un homme. C'est 4, 4 l'année de l'âge, Hort Castri, qui est passé le 23 février 2021. La mort le mot 80 c'est un homme 76 l'année, Hort Gozili, qui est passé le 5 en mois d'avril 2021. La mort le mot 83, c'est une madame 92 l'année, Hort Castri, qui est passé le 9 mars 2021. La mort le mot 94, c'est une madame 84 l'année en l'âge, hors souffrir, qui est passé le 9 mois de mai 2021. Le ministère de la Santé a remercié le public en plein pour la patience et la compagnie. 14 agences de santé et sociale à cette ci ont trouvé le bénéfice de leur atelier concernant le traitement de l'indépendance à ce tabac. Atelier, c'est un lot pour venir pour continuer l'étudiement, les personnes dans la PIA pour poursuivre le service d'assistance pour aider les gens qui ont touché fond à un service tabac et fumer cigarette. 
deux jours à tirer ça là, tenir une présentation, on pas haut, et que WHO, c'est l'organisation santé, et que aussi l'Amérique, et que Switzerland, et pays Caraïbes là aussi, il y a un gros grec qui aussi a conseillé à ce contrôle de service tabac, c'est Dr. Francisco Amanda Perez, qui a forcé raison pour attirer ça là. Dr. Perez a forcé effort pour continuer à bâtir des institutions pour contrôler le service tabac. Par exemple, faciliter le service santé, programme pour adresser la situation là en diverses manières, et pour avoir conseils et traitement pour vieux vie ça là. Il a estimé que 60% en yon point 3 billion moun qui a servi tabac, j'ai montré des yeux pour de bout fumé, mais en ek 33% ne facilité exoti pour aider sa fête. Le ministre des Affaires Santé a cette lycée, honorable Mary Isaac, déclaré que le projet de la a renforcé la capacité pour aider cette lycée pour de bout fumé. Le ministre des Affaires comprend qu'il savent sa qu'il a porté yon fèze à ce yon qui a ma frise et que vieux vis la ni capabilité à pour détruire et fort yon qui ni désir pour quitter fumer netament. Yon 182 pays jassiés pour agrément ça là, ça c'est plus que 90% de population en la terre. Chef officier extension en département agricole, Camille Jebatis, qui a conseillé les femmes pour prendre toute précaution pour protéger et préserver l'équipement agricole yo, si en cas yon désastre. Selon M. Jebatis, les cultivateurs, ça c'est les FAMA, n'ont pour point action pour faire assurer de préserver tout équipement chimique et l'autre nécessité agricole et placer yo à des facilités côté cyclone ne peut pas affecter yo et ne cause mauvaise dépense pour les FAMA. Si vous avez des chimiques, les femmes, les chèques, les chimiques, les chèques, les sel, um, sprayers, ou pompes, pour toutes ces bails, ça, il est vraiment important pour nous pour des marches et pas pour une chance. Parce que là, madame, il a acheté un pompe après avril 12, il pète bon pli, il a acheté un pompe et pour avril 28, le pompe est en vie et flotte encore. Bon, cette situation, ça va venir, nous ne pouvons pas être expecté, et ça n'a pas compris. Mais si vous savez, si l'année annonce mon cadeau, que je n'ai pas l'eau la pli, ça pour faire, c'est tirer ces bails, ça, mettre les côtés où ça veut l'eau pas qu'elle joue, si vous pouvez sauver comment il a l'argent avec un pli en pédot. Monsieur Jean-Baptiste, aussi, car. Faire les femmes savent que la nécessité chimique qui nous a servi à subitation agricole après un cyclone passé. De là, si vous jouez dans le sale, en l'eau la pluie, on si de l'eau à l'ouest, ça va dans la pluie passé 24 ans de temps. La nécessité chimique, vous savez que c'est l'officier qui a advisé ou qui a dit que c'est chimique. Ça y est, il a fait aider ses plans pour renouveler le coin. Il a aidé ses racines pour renouveler le coin. Si vous savez que c'est un cyclone, vous avez un chai de l'eau, vous pouvez garder sur ça. Um, acheter à de ces bails là avec un um, traitement ça qui est un dos pour recouvrir à um, de ces plans qui est dommagé. Et monsieur, madame, ça c'était côté, avec ça c'est côté nous vivons à bout de nouvelles nous pour aujourd'hui. Je vous remercie autant pour vous regarder. Je vous remercie pour une invitation pour vous remercie pour encore. C'est dire que vous avez la vie. Continuez à vous présenter une autre nouvelle. À quoi vous avez présent? C'est le moment de vous présenter. Chanel. Merci, Appel Primus. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norvell.